river carries life along the stream, providing a source of water for the ecosystem. Selangor have a total population of 5.46 million based on the 2010 population distribution by the Department of Statistics, Malaysia. Now to cater to the needs on a daily basis, Klang River has become the beacon of fresh water source. However, based on updated report from the Star in 2013 in the article Selangor Rivers Polluted, Dr. Hafizan Juahe, the head of Environmental Forensics Research Centre of University Putra Malaysia, had this to say. Clean water sections of the rivers were getting shorter due to development, especially for housing. In the span of 10 years from 2000 to 2010, the average annual growth rate of housing in Selangor reached almost 7%, which is high when compared to other states in Malaysia. This is attributed to the growing population and the increasing need for water daily. While growth is inevitable, there is a need to educate and create awareness towards the importance of rivers. Thus, born the project River of Life, a campaign jointly organised by the Department of Irrigation and Drainage Malaysia and the Global Environment Centre and ERE Consulting Group. Knowing the source of the problem is important, and arming ourselves with the right knowledge allows better solutions to the problem. At the school level or even at the, at the, I would say, at the, at the, at the, at the uh, community level, uh, public do not know where the water actually come from. Uh, they only know that when it turns the tap, water flows is it. But where does this water, where does, where does water come, how does it come to the tap? It used to come from the, the dam, all right, or from the treatment plant where they pump the water along the rivers, all right. You know, they pump the water from the rivers that flows through the, uh, that flows along the, the rivers. Uh. So this is where I think uh, the source of water has to come from, none other than the river itself. This river is classified as safe to use, so there's hope for a water source. However, it's disheartening to see this gazetted recreational area polluted with litters such as polystyrene and plastic bags. The local community would advise litter-friendly visitors to clean up, but the task can sometimes meet less than friendly retorts. Sebagai uh, satu masyarakat yang sukakan kebersihan, memanglah perasaan tu marah ada. Uh, tetapi apa kuasa kita? Uh, ada tempat kita boleh kontrol, kontrol. Macam, uh, macam tempat ni dekat dengan tempat saya, saya boleh kontrol. Tapi kalau jauh daripada kawasan saya, saya tak boleh kontrol lah. He wears no official title, but what he does is part of a bigger picture to save our water source. Although the damages have been done, what we can do now is proper management. The smart tunnel showed us what happened behind the concrete drainage system. Tons of thousands of rubbish summed up the behaviour of Malaysians. We also get a huge amount of polystyrene and plastic bottles, and, uh, and uh, those are the kinds that uh, gets easily disposed into the river by uh, uh, consumers. About 28, uh, uh, what do you call, containers of rubbish. Every day, the never-ending battle against rubbish continues. But what we hope to at least achieve is creating awareness about the importance of our rivers. We have seen slight positive improvements and every small step goes a long way in saving our precious rivers. Welcome back to The Breakfast Show. There was a beautiful, clean, crystal clear water river there. Mm -hmm. An amazing, beautiful. Okay. Now, water is our life source. Um, that's how, you know, in ancient times as well, a lot of communities, they would build next to rivers because they need the water. Absolutely. And so you'd always find communities and developments would begin at the river. And rightfully so. Absolutely. It's the giver of life. It's something that makes up two-thirds of our body, and it should be clean mm. if we're going to be putting it into there. And so we're going to talk about uh, river conservation, how we can make our rivers a little bit cleaner so we can have cleaner water for future generations. <clears throat> With us to talk more about this is Dr. Azmi and Dr. K. Kalitasa, the coordinator for River Care Program. Good morning, Thank gentlemen. So Thank you so morning. much for joining us here yeah. this morning. Okay. Now, we saw some uh, you know, fairly shocking images just now, yeah. especially the one I find quite disturbing is of how much rubbish is collected. Um, are these one of the main sources of our river pollution of people throwing rubbish into you know, passing water? Yes, it is. Uh, one of the major sources is rubbish because uh, people just uh, throw the rubbish to the river without, without knowing that the implication of it. But of course, there are other things uh, which contribute to the pollution of the river. Uh, pollutants like you know, um, not treated water before flowing into the river 
and uh, chemicals from industry, all those uh, contribute to the pollution of the river. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so what are some of the things that all of us can do yeah. to help prevent, you know, causing a bigger problem? Yeah, uh, of course, uh, every, every one of us is actually responsible yes. to it. And then uh, we are living in the catchment of river. And whatever we consume, the water finally goes to the river. Correct. So I think uh, if we manage our things, our water, and then properly maintain and properly uh, you know, treat, and then finally it goes to the clean water to the river. Yeah, so uh, it's just like the images we're seeing yeah. on the screen now, that doesn't even look like a river just now. It looked like rubbish instead of the yeah, river it's actually fill. yeah it's a landfill is when it, things like this make me want to question is this can this be in some part attributed to the fact that we have so many open drains that things a lot of stuff blows in there or it's just so tempting just to throw it there because it's just an open it's thing out of sight out of mind kind of deal general perspective of the public they yeah. see river as a disposal channel right because okay. it Where just brings things throw away yeah. Mm -hmm. the river. So this is the thing. And secondly, whether we do understand the concept of river basin, that, mm -hmm. that, that we are part of the river. No? So whether, regardless whether you are immediately up, uh, in the, at the bank, or say one of you for a few kilometers from the river. No? Right. So, so you are connected to basin or right. river, okay, either directly or indirectly. So these are the main, uh, main issue eh, that public don't tend not to understand. Mm -hmm. Ah, so ah. it comes down to the issue of, of awareness and education yeah. about these issues in terms of how do we create a, a, a cleaner potable mm -hmm. source of water. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people don't realize the fact that the groundwater, it's, it's our water table, which is where all our potable water comes yeah. from, is affected by things that you throw in there. When things mm -hmm. decompose, those chemicals yeah. leak into our fresh water. Mm -hmm. So how do we, how do we, what can we do to be responsible to protect ourselves from this kind of stuff? Uh, uh, we have to educate people of not throwing all those rubbish to the river, to the drain, as mentioned. So you should look very tempted to throw rubbish to the open drain, you know, that it's just like the source of, it's a place there to, to, to throw rubbish. Right. So we have to go to people, we have to engage people. So we have a program under ROL, River of Life, uh, which is um, ROL Paul, River of Life uh, Public Outreach Program. And we go to them, uh, we go to community, we go to industry, we go to de developers, talk to them how to manage the uh, our behavior mm -hmm, right towards mm -hmm. the river. And uh, what are some of the changes that, that can be made? Yeah. Um, well, now, what about so who are some of the parties involved in the conservation of our rivers? Yeah, as I mentioned, of course, everyone of us is involved. And mm -hmm. then, of course, um, having said that, uh, government actually embarked into so many projects uh, to ensure that the water quality is, is good, is, is in acceptable level. And of course, uh, department, uh, local authorities like, you know, if you're talking about Klang Valley, MPAJ, DBK, MPS, are uh, those uh, local authorities we are actually supposed to look into it. And we are working together. JPS, uh, Jabatan Pengairan Dasilan, also have their roles to do. We have guidelines for developer how to develop our land right. uh, to ensure that there's no sediment uh, going into the river. Mm -hmm. right. So we are proper managed. So we are working together with the local authorities uh, to, to go and, and engage people, mm -hmm. and then give them awareness and also action right. of how to deal with. Are there any kind yeah. of, is there any kind of legislation in place that would, um, f uh, not say force, but to help control the behaviors of developers to uh, address things like silt off, uh, running off into places mm -hmm. like um, Kuala Selangor where we have the fireflies, which is becoming a lot less now the concentration of fireflies because of development and silt going into the river. Yes, any laws that yes, cities uh, like um, local authority they have an enforcement law, mm. uh, but not JPS. Mm. JPS is uh, good, you know, uh, having uh, guidelines or those things. Right. But we are working together with local authority to do uh, come together and enforce. Now because is, they it, have laws, yeah. is it just um, in Slango or is this project being expanded to other states as well? Yeah, in fact, uh, now we are focusing in uh, Klang Valley and mm -hmm. uh, the KL City Centre. Uh, to get the very good water quality of, of KL City, mm -hmm. where water flowing uh, directly across the uh, city centre. And we have planned, because this project, uh, in fact, the, the concept of ROL is uh, Integrated River Basin Management at Sub Basin. We also are going to have this on other parts of the, of, of, of the area. We have, I think, about uh, 2,980 rivers in Malaysia. How many? 2,000? Yes. 2,980. 2,890 river okay. basin in Malaysia. Mm. But mm. the main basin is 189. 
So we have to deal with, we have to manage this in a holistic manner. In right. fact. Mm -hmm. Because they're all connected, aren't they? Yeah. One flows to another, yeah. to yeah. another. It's yeah. interconnected. So what and happens here affects all the other states as well. Yes, so. yes. Yeah. But the key thing is, beside uh, the concept of the river basin, we have to also understand when we say river, drain is a part of the river basin. That's ah. very important. Mm -hmm. No point you and I love the river yeah. and uh, be active once a year, go and do the cleanup. But 363 days we pollute their drain. That's Thank the you. concept. Yeah, and throw everything so, into yeah, the drain. Yeah. And uh, this uh, juice of this Roll Pop project, River of Life Public yeah. Outreach Program, is is to infuse the ownership. Love your drain. Yes. yes. If you can take care of their drain, if every individual in Malaysia can take care of their drain, I mean, JPS can take care of the river. Yeah. Because God created the river in such a way that river can look after herself. Yeah, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. But we she made the drains. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we create. So we have to take care. Uh -huh. And that's number one. Number two is the stakeholders. It's not only government, private sectors, public, NGOs, but we also have to understand that we are custodian, not only for human beings, but also for flora and fauna. Correct. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so whatever we do, we cannot be selfish to think about ourselves, no? whether we have enough water for our domestic use, for irrigation, or for industrial, yeah? Yeah. but we also think whether there's enough water for the aquatic life, Correct. for the flora and fauna, because why? They can't travel to another basin to collect their water, yeah. like what you and I can do. They can't yeah. go buy mineral water. Yeah. <laughs> they can't. Yeah. Yeah. They can't. So, so it's our responsibility not only to think about us, don't be selfish to think about human being, homo sapiens, but also the other species, the other stakeholders, the flora and fauna, which they are much earlier than us in this world. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, I think that a, a lot of people do take mm -hmm. for granted the, the water sources that we have because mm -hmm. it is a wet country. We have monsoon, we have yes. you know tropical rainforest uh, a, a settings and these kind of things. And like you said, 2,980 river basin, mm -hmm. that's quite a lot of water yeah. mm -hmm. here. But this does not mean that we have all the water in the world, we can just throw it out the windows. We have to do what we need to do to yeah. preserve it. Yeah. Um, Dr. K, uh, what do you think that we can do about taking things for granted with regard to our water source? I mean, one of the key things that what we're trying to do is instill the, the, the relationship between human being and the river. No? Mm. See, civilization started from river. Our drinking water, 97% of our drinking water in Asia are coming from river. Mm -hmm. Our fish are coming from river. No? Right. But unfortunately, the mindset of the young generation, uh, our kids now, they think water coming from tap without knowing where it's come from. <laughs> fish coming from the supermarket. Yeah. Right. Okay, chicken coming from there. No? So we have to reconnect them to the nature. Because once they understand, uh, we believe with the uh, civic science, because why we want uh, our generation to understand things from mind to the heart. Mm. Once you go to the heart, the action will stimulate automatically. Exactly, Correct. and yeah. so going back to the source yes. yeah. of everything. Now, you know, you were mentioning about the 2,980 mm. water sources. Where are they located, you know, the main ones, if you could share with us? Uh, 2,980 uh, river basin mm -hmm. in, throughout the Malaysia Peninsula includes uh, Sabah and Sarawak. So, uh, but the, there are small, small rivers, you know. Um, the main uh, basin is 189, which will look uh, into it uh, to ensure that you know, we, we well manage the basin. And where, whereabouts are they located, a few of them? I know you can't nearly all over, the, all over Malaysia. When we're talking mm. about river basin, it's, uh, it's a Malaysia, it's an uh -huh. area of Malaysia. Mm -hmm. so Every inch is a part of the it's basin. It's a part of the river. Ah, I see. <laughs> in, 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 so in, that's why uh, we always ask. Can you know your river address? Yeah. Ah, right. No. Uh, we nobody knows. No. Mm -hmm. So I think the first thing the Malaysian should do is go and source for your river address. So at least you know that if I'm like myself, my river basin is uh, Langan. Yeah. So I know if anything goes wrong in Langan, I have an impact yeah, sooner or later. So that's why every Malaysian, besides know their home address, you should know your river address. Yeah. Wow. Meaning where okay. your local water source is affected yes. along the way. Yes. Exactly. Mm. Mm. This is this is a beautiful location. Yeah. Yeah. Whereabouts is this one located? Does this uh, actually exist? Yeah, I yeah. think this is the most upstream of our Klang River. I think just uh, downstream of Klang Gate Dam. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, uh, considered a class one water quality index. Uh, this is crystal clear and then can be, you know, can take and drink it. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, but it's not advisable maybe. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Can you expand yeah. on uh, what you mentioned just now about the yeah. water uh, purity index? Yeah. Uh, so the scale of one, that's the, the purest? Mm. Yeah. And that's, uh, the, yeah. How, what is the worst ratio? It's five. Five. We have one to five. Is mm -hmm. this parts per million? 
yeah. the, uh, it's an index. Uh, okay. It's an index. So, so we measure from uh, six parameters, you know. Right. Um, for water quality index, we measure um, uh, BOD, we measure B COD, okay. we measure dissolved oxygen, right. pH value, and also suspended solid in, in, the, uh, in, in the river. Correct. So all these components mesh up, come to index, you know. Ah. So to get the our target of our Klang River to get a class 2B, which is about 76.5, Index okay. of water quality. But that's for the whole Klang River mm -hmm. as a whole. Uh, not the whole. It's a, it's a focus uh, area which is I about see. 419 kilometers square. That's a huge area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you calculate the tributary, so it's going to be 110 kilometer. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have to focus into distributors to ensure that the water quality is acceptable. And then just all that needs to happen is at one end, someone to dump a whole heap of rubbish, and yeah, it starts to. Flowing, and then yeah. uh, it goes everywhere. Actually, yeah. once I saw something very very. Um, upsetting for me yeah. is a drain mm. that was full of uh, curry. Oh, oh yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I know. <laughs> that is preposterous. People, exactly. This, this is our water. This is what provides us with life and clean living and these kind of things. What happens in our, what we put into our, our rivers and drains and these kind of things, it's going to evaporate, go into the sky, it's going to rain down on you and bring some of those toxins with it. We have to do our part to make sure that we've got clean waterways for, as they mentioned, yeah. flora, fauna, ourselves and our future generations of kids. Yeah, uh, cool. Any last words for our viewers today? Anything you'd like to share and that you'd like them to try and start doing? Yeah, um, I think we highlight on our program, Roll Pop, you know, we are going to have our river carnival. Uh, at uh, SMK uh, uh, Taman Malawati, Ulu Klang. Mm -hmm. So we are actually um, hope that the community around the area come uh, together. You know, we educate them. We work together how to um, deal with rivers, you know, uh, and then ownership of the river, other thing. Mm -hmm. So. Um, 29th of September is going to be Sunday. Mm -hmm. So uh, start from morning, 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. So if um, all of us can be there, this is good. And then uh, it's, it's a part of education. Um, if you want to learn yeah. how to audit the river, yeah. okay? So oh. be Please. there. We <laughs> have a workshop for the kids especially. Uh, and yeah. then how to see if there's a dragonfly in the river, what does it mean? What's the mm -hmm. indicator? Oh. Yeah. Uh, if they say uh, fly, what does it mean? Yeah. Uh, leash means what? So everything we taught in fun, uh, interactive way. You know, I like you know. this. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. So again, going back to the source, so the uh, next generation understands where yes. their their yeah. you know source is coming from. Everything yeah. that they're using. Well, just to uh, recap as well, the websites for any of you who would like to find out more: www.myrol m y r o l dot my as well as www.gec.com.my. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thank gentlemen. You, That's been extremely interesting, and um, a, a, all of us can learn from that as well. So learn your river address. That's the That's first right. thing I'm going to do. Learn your river address and come on Sunday and help clean up the rivers a little bit and have your kids be exposed to why it's important to have clean water. All right, now we're going to go for a quick break, but do stick around.